Washington. And would you please welcome with me, Pastor Bob Leinberger. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I thought this was a book opportunity, not a roast. Uh, thank you, hon. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, just to clarify a couple things, uh, good to know is not what I tried to teach Dan. Uh, when someone says something to you and you say to them, good to know, that usually takes it up a notch. Uh, wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but Darlene deserves a lot of credit. Um, in fact, it's taken three years to get this book done, and uh, she hasn't had a vacation in three years that the entire time almost uh, I worked writing on the book. She's put up with so many times talking to me about it, and I just want to say publicly thank you for all that you've done. I want to say to all the people in this room, I, I appreciate you and thank you for doing it. So many of you played a massive role in it. Uh, I want to take a second and then pray before I get started. Dear God, I thank you for these amazing people. I thank you for the opportunity we have to open up your words. I pray, God, that you'd help me to say what you want. And I pray, God, that whatever you want to do with this book, that you would use it. God, I thank you for this privilege tonight to be amongst friends. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. When I was 11 years old, I so badly wanted to hang out with my dad. I knew he was going to be working, and I went and asked my dad, I said, is there any way, dad, I could come and spend some time with you? And my dad reluctantly said yes, and then I got to go to work with him. Showed up at work, and my dad was so busy that it was about an hour, and I didn't get to do anything. And I finally said, hey, dad, is there any way I can help you? And he said, yeah, I want you to clean up these brushes. Go out in the backyard and clean up these brushes. So I took paintbrushes in the backyard to go get them clean, and I did not want to disappoint my dad. I took so much time cleaning the brushes, and I brought them to my dad to show him how clean they were, and I was anticipating he was going to say, that's such a great job. But what he did is he walked to the back, and he saw that I had paint all the way on the side of the house, down the grass, into the driveway, and my dad was not happy. He didn't say a single word. He gave me the silent treatment, and he went back to work. And I sat on a lawn chair waiting for my dad for over an hour. And I finally went up to him and I said, Dad, is there any way I can help you? And he said, would you carry the drop cloths to the car? And I didn't want to do it in several trips. I wanted to prove to my dad that I was worthy. So I took a bunch of drop cloths and I started walking. Unfortunately, there was a can of oil-based paint and I'm walking on this deck with this oil-based paint, and I had the drop cloth so far I couldn't see, and I tripped and spilled the oil-based paint everywhere. And here's what my dad said to me that day. You are useless. There is no way I'm ever bringing you to work with me again. And those words were difficult. That was a hard day, and those were painful words. And what I want to talk to you tonight is about something so important. I want to talk to you about something that could help you in your relationships. It's something that is super basic, but oftentimes we don't see it. And hopefully uh, you can see what this actually says. It says destructive behavior. Now, no matter how many times we want it to not be destructive, if we do something that is destructive in our behavior, it's going to cause us to have disconnected relationships. No matter how many times you say it, no matter how many times you think it, if you want satisfying relationships, you must change your behavior. Uh, I'm going to say this again. If you want to have satisfying relationships, you have to change what? your behavior. People can't see our intentions 
or reasons or emotions. They can only see our behavior. I want you to think about this for a second. I didn't see what was going on in my dad's world. I wasn't tuned in to what he was motivated by. All I remember some 40-some years later is that you are useless. You see, it's our behavior that we see. People can't see the reasons. They can't see anything else. All they can see is our behavior. And if we have destructive behavior, you're going to have disconnected relationships. You see, if you ever do any of these, there's 10 things on here or nine, depending on if you can count or not. If you threaten to leave, withdraw, defend yourself, start conversations harshly, release your anger, and validate somebody else's experience, assign blame, unleash negative emotions, or say critical words, any of those things are behavior, and that kind of behavior will leave you with disconnected relationship. If you do any of those things, no matter who you are, there's no shortcuts. If you want to have connected relationships, you have to change your behavior. Our existing habits, the habits that we have, these habits produce automatic reactions, which bring about destructive behavior and cause us to have disconnected relationships. How do you change your behavior? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about how do you actually change your behavior? And trust me, I've got to sit with thousands of people over the years, and I think about this all the time, and this is what I've discovered. That first of all, you need an awareness of what you need to change. You need to have a basic understanding of why we act the way that we do. We have to have insights and principles to know how to make things better. And then eventually we need to have new habits to be able to implement the necessary change that's going on. Um, But what I want to start with first of all is that Jesus is the author of this. All I did is just reformat slightly what he said. That's why it works. The principles and insights that Jesus offered work in the real world and will help you improve all of your relationships. These are the two foundational principles that this entire book is based on. And I would encourage you to live by. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Here's the first principle. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And here's what you can learn from it. You can look at how you wish other people treated you to understand what to do. Think about this. If you you just think about it, um, I'm going to pick on Mark because he's sitting up here fairly close. And what I would do is I think about uh, what's going on in Mark's world. And I think about, what do I, would Mark want me to do? And then do it. It's amazing how many times, now for give you an example, let's say that I messed up and I did something wrong and I did something that offended you. And I would look at you and go, what is it I want you to do? I would want you to give me a second chance. I would want you to forgive me. I would want you to give me an opportunity to make things right, wouldn't you? See, if you just do something that simple, that's an insight that can make practical difference. If you love those who love you, what credit is that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those to whom you expect to get repayment, what credit is that? See, if you love or lend or you give with the expectation of getting back, everyone else does that and there's no credit for you in it. Even sinners led to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you'll be children of the Most High. Because he is kind to them, grateful, be merciful just as your father is merciful. And he goes on and he says that he wants us to love others. And then it talks about some of the coolest principles of all. But here's the second principle. We need to treat people the way God treated us. Now, these principles are so cool and so amazing that that you can either get caught up through the lens of your unmet expectations. If something happens, you can look at it through the lens of what your unmet expectations are, or you can look at it of the lens 
that uh, God has the opportunity to meet your deepest longings and desires. You can look at it through what you don't have, or you can look at it at how God treated you. You see, what Jesus is offering is the freedom for us to not be bound by what anyone else does to us. That we have the ability to be able to respond in a productive way regardless of what anyone else does. And it's so amazing. If you read the rest of Luke, he talks about some really practical ideas like don't judge. Because it's our first thing that we tend to do. He talks about this tree, about what's on the inside will come on the outside. And then he talks about a house. And basically what he's saying is unless the inside changes, the outside isn't going to be different. It's the same that we're going to talk about when it comes to relationships. It's your behavior. It's your behavior that will cause you problems. Changing habits is a slow process that always feels awkward in the beginning. With practice, we can gradually build the skill to be able to do it consistently, real time. Anything we do repeatedly will become automatic over time. Now, what I want to show you, and I I want this to be visual for just a second, is I want you to think about it this way, is our behavior is what gets us in trouble. But what we don't realize is there's automatic reactions that are driving our behavior. Did you know that internally there's chaos going on inside of us, and we have desires that we want to have met? And we go into a situation and our desires are driving our behavior. And if we don't learn how to overcome our automatic reactions, we're not going to be able to have productive behavior. But we also have to overcome our existing habits. All of us have them. All of us have existing habits that lead to automatic reactions, which cause us to have destructive behavior, which leaves us with disconnected relationships, and it undermines everything. What I want to encourage you is there's a better way. You see, the insights and the principles are that we get to look at the other person and what we wish that they would do for us and then do that for them. We also get to treat people better than their actions deserve and treat them like God would treat us. But unless you actually develop new habits, which, by the way, gives you an opportunity to have a thoughtful response instead of an automatic response, so what, what I want to encourage all of us is that we're not destined to be miserable. Darlene's right. We had some real struggles. We had Darlene's dad die and he, of a heart attack. And it was overwhelming to us and we had to go do the funeral. And then after that happened, it was painful and difficult. And then my brother was killed in a car crash. And then we had to go and do that funeral. And then after we did that, um, then it was super painful and super difficult, but her mom had a brain aneurysm. And then after we survived that funeral and all of that chaos, then my dad died of cancer. And then after that, we ended up having our niece move in with us, and it exposed every single weakness we had. And I had all kinds of automatic reactions. To where when my wife was telling me how difficult and hard it was, I denied her experience. I withdrew from her emotionally. And every once in a while I got angry. And my automatic reactions caused me to have destructive behavior which left me with disconnected relationships. But what God taught me was that I get to develop new habits that lead to thoughtful responses that help me with productive behavior that ultimately leads me with connected relationships. And what I want to encourage every single one of you is that you have an opportunity to let God change you from the inside out. But you see, change that surface level doesn't actually solve the problem. And we have to go way beyond our behavior to develop new habits. So I'm going to show you how this works, okay? And you can read it if you want, which I hope you do. (laughs) You see, when I was defensive and I didn't listen to my wife, I'd actually learn habits that would help me to overcome my automatic reactions because I was so defensive that it was my go-to move and she would start to express what was 
hurting her or what made her sad or what was difficult. And then I would defend, I would deny, I would completely not allow her to express anything. And the only thing it left us is disconnected. But did you know, instead of starting there, you can just care about the person? You see, this is a habit that will help you when it comes to listening to make your relationships better. Is you simply care about the person. And Pastor Dan, here, here's the actual principle I've been trying to get you. <laughs> You're going to say it back, okay? Because this is a reverse roast for just a second. Tell me more. That sounds important. I really want to hear what you have to say. Do you see how if you build a habit to care about the person? You see, when it comes to somebody's experience, you don't have to deny, dismiss, disregard. You can acknowledge and validate. You see, when it comes to the meaning, which is what they're operating on, you do not have to undermine it. You can just receive what they say before you respond to it and demonstrate that you received it before they will believe it. And if you develop the habits to care about the person, acknowledge and validate. And then after you do that, you understand what is the meaning. You see how this habit helps you overcome your automatic reactions, which gives you productive behavior and gives you connected relationships. And what I want to encourage you is you have to change your behavior, but you need habits to be able to do it. And as I close, I want to encourage you that you can have better relationships. But it isn't assigning blame to the other person. It isn't getting angry and expressing your negative emotions in unproductive ways. It's actually to allow God to transform you into a better person, the one that he designed you to be all along, so that you can experience the connected relationships that your heart's desire.